What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, telling you to make sure you tune in every Thursday, of course, to see me. <laughs> and you can see my other friends and family doing the things of the things of the things. Listen, you do not want to miss it. It is family fun and crazy chaos. It's always some shit going on from every, it's so many twists and turns. You do not want to miss it. CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back 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 CAP zapping all you hoes away like CAP zapping all you hoes away like If in your secret life or in your day-to-day -day dealings, your feelings mm -hmm. do, your feelings and actions do not reflect that, I can give a fuck about a like, click, or comment. What work are you doing? Everybody go. Everybody go. Everybody go. Everybody go. Everybody go. Everybody go. Hey y'all, come on in the classroom. School is starting late today, guys. You guys want to know what I'm putting on my body? I'm putting on Rose from Bath and Body Works, but the bougie bitch in me wants to say Rose. I'm putting on Rose. Well, that makes me think of Rose from Drag Race. The winner is Rose. Sashay, Shantae, you stay. Drag is all over the world. It's a phenomenon. It can live on and on. And then I'm putting on Londer T. Lon Somebody tell me how to pronounce this. Londerti by Givenchy. I think this is Audrey Hepburn's original fragrance. I love the way it smells. It just makes me feel great about life. Mm. All right. What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty here to do the Lord's work once again. And today, I am having the opportunity again to talk to Elisa Diamato, winner of a &TM Cycle 17, all stars, all stars, all stars. She be like, whoa, she be like, whoa, she be like, whoa, she be like, whoa. I could have done, I could have did her backgrounds, you know, whatever. So, listen guys, we're gonna get into the things of <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, okay. Oh, you guys like my own wallpaper? This is my new wallpaper in my bedroom. It's black. It's a different black and white pattern on, on a different... Okay, whatever. Back to the top model. So today we are talking to Lisa. I'm not going to lie. I'm very nervous because we know Miss Lisa does not give a fuck about what comes out of her mouth. But with that being said, she better answer all of my questions today. Miss Lisa Badass, you better answer all my questions today and all my friends' questions today. Miss Lisa Badass. I'm going to start calling Lisa that. Miss Lisa Badass. <laughs> I'm about to send a request for Lisa to come on in, y'all. Where is Lisa? Diamato. Lisa. Lisa. Diamato. Lisa. Oh, my hat is great, too. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Where's Lisa? Lisa, 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 Lisa. Lisa, 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 la, la Lisa, la Puccinera, la Luz, <laughs> la Lisa, la Puccinera, grande, <laughs> gordo. <laughs> no, all right, Lisa, where are 
are you? Let's try this again. Oh, I almost want, I wanted to say something else. While Lisa's figuring out her life trying to get in, I haven't had the opportunity to, like, come down and regulate class in a long time because the head nerd in charge has been very busy. But let me tell you, motherfucker, something. If there's something here that you don't like, turn the goddamn phone off and go play in your pussy. Play in your mom's pussy. How about that? If there is something over here at the ANTM to exclusive that you do not like, shut the phone off, block me, prohibit me from coming up in your timeline, go play in your pussy, go play in your mom's pussy, go play in your dog's pussy, because what I won't tolerate over here is anybody coming being disrespectful and bringing negative energy. These chats were birthed out of my vagina. My vagina, which has walls, lace of positivity in its linen and in its fiber. This is not the place for all the things of the things. Now the girls come on here and they give us all the things of the things, but that 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 is not my my interest. I want to know about top model and whatever comes after that just comes on after that. But all you other bitches that come over here with all your negativity, take your ass on. I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. And this is not the place for that. You could be negative in your mom's vagina. Take it back to the womb from which you 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 fell out from, and go playing in her. Or I've shown you what the formula is. You just have to have a personality, a camera, Wi-Fi, and time in your hands. You can go live yourself and create your own content. I fully support you. I won't be there to watch it, but I support it in the Cosmos and Brosmos. All right, I think that's enough. I'm done. <laughs> Don't play in mine. Oh, yes, I got time today. I put on my fragrance. I feel nice. You know, I think it was the perfume that did it. Yes, it is a woman's fragrance. I love smelling like a woman because it makes me happy. Um, and you, I had a conversation with my boyfriend the other day, but I was like, I may need to look into, like, do I need to start identifying, identifying as non-binary? It's really weird because I don't, I feel like a woman. I use woman things and woman pronouns, but it's like, I don't want to have breasts. I don't want to have a vagina. I don't want to have, you know, I still like my manly features. Like, I like being, I like being a cross between the two, if that makes sense. Like, split. Oh, Lisa. Okay, let's try this again, Lisa. Okay. Lisa, it says you must upgrade your app in order to join. That's what Instagram is telling me right now. It says Lisa underscore Diamato. <laughs> Let me take a picture of it so y'all don't think I'm lying. <laughs> Lisa, what what you running on over there, girl? It says Lisa Diamato must upgrade app in order to join. <laughs> that is funny to me. So what should we what should we do, guys? I mean, should I end the live and wait for Lisa to upgrade her phone? I mean, upgrade her app, or even though someone y'all, so how about someone from Facebook? This is some spooky shit. Someone from Facebook DM'd me and was like, "Instagram is having issues today, so you should take your AMT chat to YouTube." And I thought it was just a hoax, but now I see they were they weren't lying. I mean, I can keep ranting if you guys want me to. I was going to talk about, I was debating on whether or not I was going to talk about the pink elephant. What is it, like the pink elephant, red elephant, some shit. Okay, never mind. Lisa said a request. Stay by the goddamn bell. <laughs> Lisa! Yes! I was like, what is happening? Do you know that I even tried to, um do a live earlier just to make sure. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the hell? Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Okay, I'm trying to get rid of all these things. Hello, hello. How are okay, you? hi. How are you, Lisa? I'm good, let me turn it up. When I have kids, my phone just keeps like 
dropping. No, Everyone's got a little bit of issues here and there in the beginning. How are how is everybody? Everyone is great. Everyone is fine. They just got a nice cursing out for me, so they should be good for like another month of chat. Okay. I hadn't cursed the children out in a while, so it probably was time. Nice. <laughs> um, I was gonna give myself a nice filter, but um, there's no filter, so this is me, y'all. Lisa, you don't need a filter. You look great. You always look great. I don't oh, ever you. think I told you this. Hi, everybody. I just want to say, and um, I just, I'm obsessed with your dimples. Really? <laughs> That's like my favorite dimples in the whole world on people. And so I actually, a lot of the time I space out when I watch your lives, by the way, I watched Jayla's yesterday. Um, and I was like, those dimples, man, they're so oh, cute. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. What did you think about Jayla's interview? It was um, good. I thought Jayla's was awesome. Um, there's a couple of things that aren't correct, but other than that, like, you know, she's, like I said before, um, Jayla, she's pretty straight up mm -hmm. when she's like, awake, if she's awake, you know, <laughs> she's always are sleeping. That, are you saying that she wasn't asleep? I mean, are you saying that she was asleep during our chat? No, 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 no. I'm saying okay. in general, like, she uh -huh. sleeps a lot, which she said, gotcha. which uh -huh. she said. No, she's a straight shooter for the most part, you know? I think. Lisa, um, wh wh what did she say that wasn't correct, Lisa? Um, she said that my trauma came from my dad, and that's mm -hmm. not true at all. Because I take care of my dad. He has MS. Like, my dad, I'm a daddy's girl. My dad's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, my trauma comes from... And also, I did not, like, just yap about all of my trauma as a child. Um, which I also told you. I was like, why didn't he step in and, like, interrupt her? But... It's okay. Um, it's from my Lisa, I don't be her... remembering. I'm sorry, baby. No, it's okay. I'm so it's sorry. Okay. I'm so it's sorry. Okay. Um, it's from my mom who has a mental disorder. Right. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying right. I remember. Yeah, she has a, she has um, what, what we call like personality disorder mm -hmm. and she's addicted to um, abusive relationships. So when mm -hmm. we were little kids, even though she won the custody battle, we were constantly exposed to um, abuse that she not only accepted for herself, but um, because we were a f reflection of her, she made sure that we got it as well. So we're talking about molestation, um, physical abuse, mental abuse. She even taught us um, eating disorders. So I had bulimia for a long time. Let me turn, mm -hmm. let me close this off. Um, look at my fun shirt for you. Let me see it. Let me see it. Ooh, yeah, that's baby. cute. Thank you. Are you wearing a robe? Yes. Uh huh. Did you? Uh, you're hilarious. Um. So anyway, yeah. The all of my trauma it comes from my mom and the and all the abuse that she welcomed into the house. Mm. And um, just to clarify as well, I did not go on Top Model and just start flapping my gums like to everybody and anything to get on the show. That's not what happened. Um, what I did do is I told the therapists that are part of the psychological evaluation, which is one on one. And um, I thought that that was confidential. In fact, what I find very funny is that the one thing that I never mentioned in that psychological like um, those therapy sessions, I remember mm -hmm. I had th two or three different therapists. And I think it's I told you this before, I think they wanted to like line up the stories because it was like so crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but in that whole process, the whole, the only thing that I never mentioned was um, that I had an eating disorder. And mm -hmm. the reason is, is because it was a modeling competition. And I Correct. was already like, I got super, super um, healthy when I was 21. So this was, mm -hmm. after, this was years after. So <clears> I, <throat> and I didn't want it to be used against me. And I remember during cycle five, when all this was going down and they were torturing me in my interviews over my, um, my childhood molestation and like the abuse that my mom would constantly um, put me through. I remember thinking like, this has to be from the, from those therapy sessions, which I thought were confidential because the only thing that I, that I never told them was about the eating disorders that I had because of my mom. And mm -hmm. I remember also like during, let's just get this all out real quick. 
um, I remember during cycle five and being in the house and like a lot of girls, you know, grouped together in the room, like sitting on the bed, sitting on the floor, like talking, mm -hmm. lying on clothes. And they were all talking about like their, how they were raped and, and amongst each other, like wearing, wearing their mics. And I remember specifically not joining in, in those conversations because I did not want it to be heard in that. And so that's also why I never told anybody else in the house what was happening to me um, during my interviews, because I didn't know if it was happening to them too. You know, I didn't want to like, sense. so it is, it is interesting. So there's <sighs> that. Gotcha. Gotcha. There's gotcha. That. Thank you for clearing that up for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa, the last okay. time we talk. Hello, we we're hello. only talking about cycle five. I've got today, this for you guys. I could not help but notice that in the background. Well, you know, at the end of the day, like it's still a beautiful shot. And it, to me, it's a, it reminds me of like, what a fucking bad bitch I am. Um, you know, Tyra, if anything is super positive about the whole experience in general, is that I feel like I am not only completely stress tested, um, I feel like I survived war. I feel like I won Hunger Games. And um, to me, that's a trophy. Yes. Yeah. Can the name of it be La Puccinetta? La Puccinetta. <laughs> <laughs> right? Lisa. Yeah. The last time we spoke, we only were talking about Cycle 5, but today we are opening up to Cycle 17. 17 all Stars. Are yeah, and I'm going to be so honest, and I want to I I walk everybody but. through, like, so they have a better understanding. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well. Do this. We are going to start off here, which I think is a great question to start off. This is from, um, excuse me I, if I am pronouncing these wrong. I'm trying my best, guys. Don't it's okay. Me. It's okay. This is from Soren Kemp. He's, he's asking, or they are asking, She's expressed that she didn't have a great experience on Cycle 5 in regards to production. What made her want to come back for All Stars? The million dollar question, right? Yes, because a lot of people, mm -hmm. at least I hope you and I today can have a very open conversation about all the things of the things, you know, because mm -hmm. I think that'll, that'll serve everybody involved, you, me, and everyone watching. Agreed. So, so, let, so let me play devil's advocate. The people will say, well, if the people tore her up so bad, mentally, mm -hmm. physically, emotionally, during cycle five, why would she come back for cycle 17? And the only logical reason could be, the, well, not the only logical, but I think the easiest one to pluck out is that Lisa likes attention and that she wanted to be back in the limelight. This is not my opinion, but I'm just saying, I'm just playing devil's advocate to give you something to respond totally. to. Totally. No, I so, totally, I understand why that, why the question goes there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here we go. For all stars, let me preface this. This is going to be a long answer because it's complicated. Oh, I got time, baby. So here we go, you guys. You ready? Mm -hmm. um, try to always keep in mind that America's Next Top Model is one of the original reality shows in American history. Yes. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's a show coming out too on E mm -hmm. um, called The Real and it's with Andy Cohen and mm -hmm. somebody's on there and this <gasps> will all it comes out next week and it's I wonder who week. that I wonder who that someone is I wonder who, I wonder that, who someone that someone is, is. so <laughs> while you were starting Oliver while you were starting these I, I was dropping a bomb that was gonna it was gonna happen anyways okay so spray Whoa! some on me spray some on me yeah, baby. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so let me walk you through this scenario. I was okay. on cycle five, and what happened after that was truly devastating. Um, mm -hmm. It was truly devastating because even though my personality still shined through, like the mm -hmm. way that the narrative that they tried to depict me at, and mm -hmm. which I find completely slanderous to my character. Um, and all the years after that, right? Like while watching Cycle 5, I remember I didn't really watch it, you know? Because you really can't believe that somebody or a group of people would do something like that to you, you know? So when I was watching it, 
And even like my longtime friends that I grew up with were like, I never, I couldn't watch it. Because it's just so painful and so hurtful to know that people would do that to you, considering that you are a good person. And I always felt like if you are a good person to other people, then they'll be a good person to you. And I already mm -hmm. felt like was such a victim to my mom, which I, you know, just that in itself, like to constantly coach myself into knowing that like, I'm not damaged and like, I'm worth it. And like, this is probably just happening to me to, um, to build like a strong character, like before top model, you know, just to, just to get through like all the trauma that I experienced. Um, and I had been on my own since I was 15 because obviously I wanted to escape all of that trauma. Um, so I left the house really early and, um, basically I had never had any therapy yet. You know, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people go through these types of things, um, and they live their whole <clears throat> lives without any therapy. So they're mm -hmm. basically just living with triggers all day long and responding to, to trauma trigger mm -hmm. trauma. They, they respond with trauma triggers their mm -hmm. whole life and it hurts them tremendously. You know, it holds them back. So when I went on, when I went on cycle five, I was so sad. And I basically lived that whole experience through other people's perceptions, like on MySpace mm -hmm. and whatever. And try to also remember that top model is syndicated in 180 countries on repeat. Okay. It never stops. So, you know, like even still to that today, like I'll have a 12 year old that hits me up on instagram and i'll be like fucking get over it you attention whore you dumb fucking alcoholic bitch you know and you're like you're 12 like it just goes to show you that the fan base just keeps going you know mm -hmm. um even though now like i'm married with a kid with kids and you know um it's just it's it's like it's almost like the the craziest question because how the fuck am i supposed to get over anything when this is on repeat and i'm stuck in an echo chamber like all these other girls and it hurts me tremendously and anything that I try to do, you know, like even politically, like when I, when I post on, when my politics like post on, um, I don't want to curse on her cause then you have to bleep everything. Right. Oh no, Lisa curse. You're fine. Just don't say okay. B -U -N -T. Just, I just won't try to do it a thousand times. I'll maybe just mm -hmm. do it maybe like 20 times. Um, <laughs> but you know, like even in the public arena and me just being like, you know, like confident and, and creative and putting all of my um, content out there and trying to like help save this country as like a screaming mom in quarantine, you know, homeschooling my kids, you know, people will still be like, isn't that that dumb bitch that shit in the diaper, you know? And it's like, even the, the, the page, like we fucking hate Donald Trump, for instance, like they had no clue who I was. And then they, they screenshot it, they send it to me and they go, what's this? Because now I'm completely derailed from the politics that I was just doing, like the, mm -hmm. the research and everything. Um, so it's just, what I'm trying to express is it's nonstop. You know, being called a dumb whore or an alcoholic bitch or a crackhead. And then everything in, in the press is like, she's chasing drugs again. You know, I went on Celeb Rehab, um, like a couple, I think it was like a year and a half later after Top Model maybe three, maybe three years later. I don't know exactly, but um, the reason I went on that show is because I got offered therapy. I never said that I was an addict. I was never detoxing from anything. Um, the reason I drank to the extent that I did was because of what was happening to me on Top Model and knowing that they had the audacity and the evil spirit to do that to a young, talented woman is just disgusting to me so when i went on celeb rehab i went on there for preventative reasons because mm -hmm. dr drew was like you are an amazing um personality that we can put on television and since there's so much taboo on therapy in general you got to think how long ago this was you know therapy is is not frowned upon nearly as much as it was then um but i did it knowing that some people are going to be like, oh, yeah, she's an addict, right? And just, mm -hmm. like, write me off as that. But to me, like, there was nothing that I could do that would hurt me worse than what I was facing every day, just as me working really hard um, in the industry and be 
go further in modeling and to go further in commercials and to like constantly book, book work. Um, so I was like, it's really, there's really nothing I can lose and I'll get the therapy that I know I need for my childhood trauma. And then people can learn from like viewers can understand what signs to look for, for somebody that could be heading in that, that direction towards mm -hmm. addiction. You know, people who suffer tremendously from trauma and PTSD, the one thing that they do, it's like 98% of people who are trauma victims and have mm -hmm. severe PTSD, they go to numb themselves because they can't stand living in their skin, you know? So not only does that just naturally happen statistically, um, but also <sighs> I was, there was nothing else I could be facing worse every day because I was being called a crack whore every single day. Let me ask you this question. I'm sorry to interject. Was oh, Celebrity Rehab before or after All Stars? I don't, I can't remember. It was before. Thought... It was before. It was before All Stars. They okay. actually used like my recovery as um, a chip, you know, to, to present as also like, let's encourage people who have gone through recovery, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that was like a whole thing. And I was also pissed at that because I was like, I was never an addict. Mm -hmm. So like to even spin that is like, why couldn't they say like just better themselves, but instead they pieced words together in, in the last episode to make it seem like I said that I was recovering from a drug addiction with, mm -hmm. or addiction. You're talking about, you're talking about on celebrity rehab. On all stars, they use that. On all stars. Okay. 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 So and I was like, oh, I've explained this so many times to them, but I was like, mm -hmm. of course they're going to do that. Um, okay. So imagine that this is just, I'm stuck in this echo chamber of my life where, gotcha. you know, anything that I do that my talent got me there, mm -hmm. if they didn't ever, if they wanted to just be rude to me or didn't like that I stuck up for myself um, in the industry, it'd be like, well, she's this, you know, mm -hmm. well, she's just, and I was just treated like garbage all the time, regardless of how much talent I brought to the table. Mm -hmm. So it was just infuriating because as you know, like you're so talented. You know, you. like you do all these amazing things. And my, my dream was to be a performer and to be um, excelling in songwriting and hosting and acting mm -hmm. and modeling. And like, that was my dream. So to know that that was just so incredibly tainted on repeat forever. Mm -hmm. um, and the constant gaslighting of abuse online, um, and then going on Celeb Rehab, completely feeling like once I left that I was a completely different person because I had now been able to really dive in and heal from all my trauma. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, that was all healing um, from my childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. I, never, I never actually got like real therapy from America's Next Top Model still. Okay. Because you know? everything has been like, I got therapy for um, just like women's therapy, like in society, like how, mm -hmm. how it's so important, unfortunately, that women have to deal with so many extra stigmas mm -hmm. and um, just ideas. And then, then also the trauma of being molested, the sexual abuse. That's mm -hmm. all. These are all like a, they're different layers so, and tiers. So, so let me ask you this, Lisa, because we, and I'm, I'm appreciating the exposition, but I want to make sure I'm, again, servicing everybody. I, <laughs> hearing you talk now, I'm, I'm even more curious to know, because I'm basing, I'm slightly basing your experiences off what I would have done, which isn't mm -hmm. the rubric, but that's, you know, that's how I'm looking at it. If, okay. I, if I had had all these things happen, mm -hmm. and, and on top of, I didn't have, the best time on on reality TV, and I'm you know I'm feeling these ways about reality TV. Again, it goes back to the original question: Why did you agree yes. to do All Star Seventeen? Yes. So this is I'm getting there. I know it's gotcha, a long, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. It's a long winded answer because it's so incredibly real and emotional, mm -hmm. and like okay. people don't like I lived it. So this mm -hmm. is a hundred percent true. So I'm just walking you through like gotcha went through therapy. I actually, my roommate was the most famous madam in all of American culture, maybe in the whole, on this planet. I have no idea. Heidi Fleiss. Um, me, a, a madam is 
basically like a pimp, right? She was a female pimp. One of the girls. One of the girls of the girls. This will come, this part will come full circle, okay? Get your asses up. Um, we'll, talk about Heidi, we'll talk about Heidi Fleiss again. Okay, um, got but, you. you know, experiencing therapy on that level, right? And it being televised mm -hmm. and really experiencing what addiction therapy is, you know, mm -hmm. going to AA meetings. I would see, um, uh, the jackass guys, Steve-O, all the time, and he'd be like, you know, because I did Top Model 5, the Wild, the Wild Boys shoot, which was, mm -hmm. um, anyway, I saw a lot of celebrities in the AA meetings, and I thought that was so funny. Now, that's just part of the process, so I had to, I had to do it, even though I wasn't detoxing from anything, so just, I'm gonna leave that right there. Um, the next year, half of my cast died. So think about like going on Celeb Rehab, which presented itself because of the way that Top Model portrayed me, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I'm just going to use this opportunity regardless if it slanders my character because there's no way they can slander it worse. And then being affected by losing half my cast in the process is just so fucking disheartening. Mm -hmm. And knowing that Top Model put me in the position to where ultimately they didn't kill me, but they left me for dead. You know, okay. like I, I find them to be um, murderers because even though they aren't actually killing somebody, they're destroying their life. Regardless if they didn't understand the capacity of their show and how much damage it could actually do to someone's life, these are real life consequences. And I, before going on Celeb Rehab, I tried to take my life a couple times. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and that was because of the constant perpetuation of just being attacked all day, every day. And jobs that I really, really loved, I wouldn't get because of, you know, and before Top Model, I was doing Gap commercials. I was doing H&M commercials, Coca-Cola commercials, like, I lived all over the world. I lived in Milan modeling. I lived in New York modeling multiple times, you know, even by myself in models apartments. I went to New York when I was 15 and lived in a model department, like with no parental vision. Mm -hmm. Like I was highly experienced in the modeling field. And also for the record cycle five for the challenges, they would constantly not give me the memo so that I would, so that I would fail challenges because I was so experienced. I was like, how did I, what? And they're like, oh, they didn't tell you like what your, what, like when it was like the natural face creams. Or you realize the, sa the level of sabotage. So here mm -hmm. we go. Once you go through therapy, you start realizing and you need to accept the truth. It's uh -huh. when you're in abuse, and when you're constantly living and gaslighting, um, you really just can't believe that people will do that to you. Like you can't face the truth and because you're still in it. You know, all those years I was still like in the abuse and still thinking as somebody who's being abused and constantly just mm -hmm. not being able to digest the truth that people would go so far to like strip you of your life and leave you for dead ultimately. And so uh -huh. it, was, it was a huge revelation that that's the truth. So trauma and PTSD survivors, um, truth is so valuable to them because it's something that they had to come um, and realize and accept. And it just means the world to me. So truth is, I don't fuck around with the truth, guys. Okay? So here we are. When All Stars um, came about, um, I remember I got a call and immediately it was like, Hey, Lisa, how are you doing? This is blah, blah, blah from America's Next Top Model. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hung up immediately. Like, like obviously triggered right away. Right. Um, also in between this, let me just say that this part, cause I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Um, I did the Tyra show because she offered to pay, I think it was like $750 to do something. And, and it was like the same day where I did like the reunion thing um, for cycle five. 
And because, because I refuse to talk about my childhood trauma on her show, I'm going to go into detail with my own content on this one and get further into it. Um, but she locked me in a closet. So when people we, go, oh, it's not Tyra. Well, then how what do you mean she locked you in a closet? Show? They locked me in a fucking closet, Oliver. What do you mean and locked then, you in a closet, Lisa? The, um, I walked onto set mm -hmm. after I had told them for like a month leading mm -hmm. up to this interview that mm -hmm. I refused to talk about my childhood trauma, especially with Tyra, because I already, they already knew about that on Top Model and it fucking was trying, like left me for dead, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I said, absolutely not, absolutely not. And then um, come to the day, like the night before, they promised me finally, they said that they weren't going to have me on the show. They're like, the show, you gotcha. know, we won't have you. You've been scrapped. And, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, we can talk about cycle five and we can talk about like designers and my future, like what I'd like to do. There's tons of other subjects. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you pushing this? Right. Mm -hmm. um, when like the, the night before they're like, we we came to an agreement at the show and we won't talk about your childhood trauma so we'll okay. still in the car tomorrow and mm -hmm. i was like okay great like i thought that i finally got my way and then um come to it uh i arrived i'm in makeup of course they try to change my clothes it's like a closet that has like you know two different layers it's like a it's a walk-in closet but not too much you know maybe like three steps in and um in that when they walk me back um, I heard a PA say, take Corinne's dad into room something, like some room. And I was like, holy shit, they have Corinne's dad here. And Corinne, I don't know if you remember from Cycle 5, like her dad abandoned her family. Mm -hmm, you know, she mm -hmm. was very much dealing with her own issues with her dad. Mm -hmm. And obviously she didn't like me, right? <laughs> Let's be real. But when I was walking from the makeup and they're about to line me up to go do my interview with Tyra, they're lining me up, right? And I can see the teleprompter to what Tyra is like about. To, um, I see that set up and I, she's reading the end of like the last segment. And mm -hmm. on the left, there was this, um, the green room where top model girls were. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I was like, Corinne, they have your dad here. And she's like, shut the fuck up, Lisa. Like she thought I was fucking with her. Like if I was trying to like start drama, but I just heard that from a PA. So I was trying to like warn her, right? And I, would, I wasn't surprised at all because look, they, they were trying to get me to talk about my childhood trauma. And so what happened was I lined up, I can see that she's pissed and she's talking to, to other people, like asking if it's true or not. They lined me up. I'm about to get pushed out to go on the stage of uh, the Tyra show. And then all of a sudden I see the teleprompter and all the words come on. And it's like, you all know Lisa from America's Next Top Model, but what you don't know is that she was molested, abused, physically abused, all these things. And I remember they like put their hand on my back to push me out in front of a live studio fucking audience. I, I think I went straight into like fight or flight. And this was before Celebrity Hat, by the way. Um, so I ran straight, I, I went out, I went to the stage. There was a little, there was like a couch there for me to sit. I grabbed the pillows from the couch, started throwing them into the audience. I was like, fuck you, fuck the show, fuck everyone sitting here, fuck anyone who like, you know, I went bananas. I grabbed those like middle, you know, the like of a studio audience. There's like those big cameras on those like big things. It's like a microwave that just continues down. They're huge. I remember grabbing that, putting my face in it and being like, fuck you guys, like throwing pillows, screaming, going nuts. The PAs grabbed me and bring me outside, bring me towards the back again. And they're like, what do you do? Like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I was livid, okay? Now granted, I'm still in this trauma space, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm still constant. I can't do anything. I can't go anywhere without being like, there's that, there's that drunk bitch from Top Model, you know? It was so painful every single day. And so they, they're like, we're gonna just set you in this room and you're gonna, we'll, we'll give you some snacks. We'll calm, like you can calm down. And I was like, get the car, get me the fuck out of here. And they're like, Lisa, just calm down. Let's just try to take a minute. And then he opens up this door, leads me in and fucking slams it closed and locks me in there. They locked me in a fucking closet, Oliver. The, P um, the PA I locked you in the closet.
A PA at Tyra's show. PA, okay. I, so, at Tyra's show, okay. So tell me, riddle me that. I mean, that doesn't make it any better, but I, 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 I okay, if got it's you. your you, show. You clarify, you clarify. If you it's your show and somebody is treated that way, wouldn't you want to be like, what the fuck and go check on them? Like if somebody. Yes, if I knew, way, if I knew about it, yes, I would want to go. I, I would want to like, go. I'd be like, why did she do that? Well. <sighs> we'll see, like, Lisa. It's 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 so many layers to it. And ugh, okay, God. so just know I'm not the I'm not the per I feel so because I hate I hate talking about these things. I don't feel like I have a license to, but it's it's so many layers to it. Okay, so here just know, here's just all just no, just no. Okay, okay, just here's, no. Here's I went on the oh. All Stars for fucking war. Okay, like I for went payback. To, I went to um, fight for my image. I went. Okay to slay i went for so many reasons but um i'll get into that more um so just know that that happened and you know what actually fucking happened that makes that even worse because uh -huh. i was still like acting as somebody who's abused mm -hmm. um they walked in they uh, they opened the door and i think what happened is they did corinne's segment mm -hmm. that's instead of doing me they probably put corinne in so you didn't do your segment at all that day no, this is the thing. I did. This is what's so fucking sad. Because I knew I got paid. Like, if I now didn't Lisa, do it, then I wouldn't get paid. Now, Lisa, now, Lisa, you know, I'm only 25. My degree is in music. But at the point at which those people disrespect you that way and the way you described it to us, you should have gotten whatever car they paid for you and took your ass home and not I came understand. back and not complied. Now, I'm I'm speaking all this in, I don't, ugh, because... I wasn't I, healed. I, I want to be sense exactly, and see that's why I want to be sensitive to your situation and what you were thinking and all and all the other stuff. But I think probably the best bet to 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 not comply in the madness that you speak of that exists from these people was once they did that was to say fuck you, get I get it, throw, but guess throw, what? throw the pillows, break the cameras, and then go home. Now that's I that's was, a badass. I was treated, <laughs> Oliver, I was treated like mm -hmm. shit all day every day. Mm -hmm. Like I was a beautiful, young, caring, hardworking girl. That had been on her own since she was 15 years old. No, I get it. I get it. Dare, which is my own fault, right? Like I should have watched mm -hmm. the show, but I, of course, just like anybody who's in an abusive relationship, I went back because it was just normal to me. So they fed me some food, and then they're like, "Will you go back on an interview with her? She promises that she won't talk about your childhood trauma." And Perfect. so to me, I was like, obviously, still so pissed off. Um, but I did do it because in the end I was like, well, that's my, that's part of my rent. Like at least, and if, and if you anybody, need the money, you know, like I was like, let's just get the money and like, keep it let's moving. And money, as far as like, moving. if she brought it up again, then I would just do it again. You know, um, I did obviously have a limit, but I still went back and it was just because at that point I was like, well, I could just, you know, feed myself a little bit or pay, add to the rent or whatever. So there's that. I'm pissed okay. at myself that I still did the interview. You know, that I will be too. Really I will sad. be. I will that be very pissed. So sad. But I did. And um, so now moving forward, okay? All stars. Um, <clears throat> I hung up the phone the first time they called. Mm -hmm. And then for whatever fucking reason, I remember it was like a day later. Um, my husband and I were sitting at the 101 Cafe. That's on Franklin in LA. And my husband's phone rang and he didn't recognize the phone number. And I it wasn't my husband at the time. It was my fiance, but he answered the phone and mm -hmm. he's like, it's for you. And I was like, what? And he's like, it's tough. And I was like, oh, tell them I'm not here. You know, like I wanted nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> then, then they found like, they did their fucking research. It, I, obviously, because my manager, um, they, they found him, they called him. And then my manager, who's also my best friend, um, he's like, you should just do this. Like you're, you've gone through therapy. It won't be your first radio. You can read mm -hmm. your character, um, cool. they're offering you money. Uh -huh. um, and so from that point, I decided to at least have the conversation. And then the conversation went like this guys ready for this shit. They're like, Lisa, if you would consider going on top model, not only will we pay you and you'll get residuals, right? So that's good. But also, um, we'll let you still do all your business with your, with my, um, with my, with my business. 
you can still go home. You can see your husband. You can do all the things that you want to do, fiance. And I was like, but I'm going to be living in the house though, right? And they're like, yeah, but we'll like totally maneuver it to where it just looks like you're living there. And I'm like, oh, you know? And then as things progress and you have to do the psychological evaluation again, um, I went to the, to the woman who it was, it was, I had to go to her house or something. It was like in Los Feliz. And I mentioned all the things I was like on cycle five, they did this, you know, they full on like weaponized my childhood trauma against me. And they're like, she's like, Oh, that won't, that won't, ha I can guarantee you like that won't happen because that ethically, like mm -hmm. I'll, I will flip out. Like they mm -hmm. can't do that. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I just, they made such an effort for me to gain trust for them, but I was still mm -hmm. even fucking with them. Like they asked me for the most current pictures of me. I sent them pictures of me with black line lipstick, um, like, like a, like a cholalita, you know, like I look like a super gangster with Dickies on and everything. And I was like, you know, sent them crazy pictures, you know, didn't do beautiful ones. Mm -hmm. um, and so when when I agreed, I finally agreed to do it because my wrangler was Amy. She was a, a, a young Asian girl. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that when she would do her phone calls, like she would come to the house and they, she, of course they didn't trust my pictures. They sent her to my house to take her own pictures of me. <laughs> so funny. Um, so that was that. And I realized that, that she was like the top talent wrangler. And mm -hmm. they gave her to me because she was so experienced. Gotcha. And I think that she um, was definitely like memoed how to handle me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so I ended up after talking to my husband, he's like, this will be really great for you because you can rebrand yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, right, well, this okay. wouldn't be, mm -hmm. be my first rodeo. I, hey, know, Molly. I mm -hmm. know what they do. I'm, I, <laughs> I've had, I've had therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, like if anybody can do it now, like they basically made me steal. Like nobody can go through as much fucking bullshit as what they put me through. And I also, because I had told you this before, I never watched the show. Like mm -hmm. I barely even watched my own because it was so hurtful and I'm so busy in my own businesses and what I'm doing that I didn't go on and watch season after season. I never did even from day one, you know, uh -huh. everything was a dare. So I didn't know that they were still doing this to girls. I didn't even hear other girls saying that this happened to them. So I thought that I was just like this weird contestant. Anom that they took anomaly. Yeah, I thought that they only did this horrible thing to me. And then after I came out on um, um, East True Hollywood Story from Top Model, um, I thought that they stopped doing mm -hmm. that to girls like just in my head I don't know why I was just like well maybe I should give them the benefit of the doubt because now they're promising me promising me all these things and maybe it's because they really want me on the show and maybe now it's like been a couple months and they're still constantly trying to get me to well, let finally me ask you say this. yes you know well, let me ask you this did, did you get any of the things that they told you they were gonna no. give you no you didn't get you didn't get no residuals Lisa no 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 I got residuals like the, the oh well, good but like was but I able didn't... to leave? No. No. Was I able not. to do, uh, like, talk to my husband, fiance at the time, like, all the time? No. You know? Um, and so I was like, oh, here we go again. Like, they're... With this craziness. They're lying. And so mm -hmm. when I, for instance, right when I walked into the... Oh, I should preface this, too. Um, okay. Before going on All Stars and getting ready to, like, pack and the time's, like you know, it's like a week to like go or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I have mentioned this to you and also in my other videos that from my trauma, because the, ma the majority of like the, the sexual, sexual abuse that happened to me when I was younger, it happened when I was sleeping, you know, like the guy, my, my mom's boyfriend would come into mm -hmm. the bedroom when I'm sleeping. Um, and that happened for four and a half years from the time I was in third grade. Mm -hmm. We're talking a fucking third grader, dude. That's so disgusting. But I'm just saying this. I'm not trying to like push all my trauma on and make everyone feel sorry for me. I'm just presenting the facts and how extreme shit was. Okay. I so I had it, really horrible sleeping disorder to where I was never able to fall asleep. 
And I knew that it was something that was super embarrassing. And luckily they never aired it on cycle five. Um, but I was still now scared that, that that would come back. I had already been cured of it because I finally found love with my fiance. I'd gotten therapy. So just even being in the place as a grown ass adult, being able to fall asleep without like rocking like this all night long, mm -hmm. um, was a huge accomplishment for me. But that being said, like knowing that this was triggering me with anxiety, like going back on the show, you guys, this is fucking nuts. You ready for this? Um, because I knew I was, I didn't know what shit they were going to pull on me. I told my husband that I know I'm not going to be able to sleep, which means I'm not going to be able to compete, which means I'm going to look ugly, which means so many things. Right. Um, my husband's like, well, I hear there's this thing called Xanax that puts you to sleep. Um, I was like, okay. I was like, but they aren't going to let me bring in like drugs. And obviously like, I don't want anyone thinking that I'm doing anything because look mm -hmm. at what happened before, you know, even just with wine. Um, so I actually got those little, those little like, um, like clear plastic pills that you can open up and fill yourself. And I filled those up with Xanax, not even fucking killing, ki um, kidding you. I put it in a melatonin bottle and that's how, and I also had a fake gun, um, in my suitcase that looked totally real that they confiscated from me. And I, I don't know what I was going to do with it, but, um, I mean, I'm telling you, I went in thinking that I was going to war. Like, this is mm -hmm. not a joke. I was not trying to, I mean, was I trying to get attention like everybody and like redeem my, my character and, and be able to not be called like a crack whore online? Was I trying to do that? Yeah. Because gotcha. that's abuse and it hurts mm -hmm. every single day. I'm a very sensitive person. Most really strong people come from being very sensitive. That's why they're so strong because they just take things so much harder. Um, so I wasn't necessarily going to use these Xanax, but I was like, at least I know that I'm prepared and it's on the DL. And if you, if you just have vitamins, then they'll allow you to keep them. Right. Um, so I had a whole bottle of Xanax, entire bottle. Um, <clears throat> cut to, I walk into the front door of the top model house. I was wearing that pinstriped hot pink pantsuit, right? Mm -hmm. um, I walked into the front door and they promised me, like I told you, that they weren't going to use my childhood trauma against me. They weren't going to, like, it was just going to be a fair and square, like, modeling competition, right? Mm -hmm. um, I walk into the front door and that's when I saw... Um, the picture, the huge blown up picture of the Wild Boys photo shoot. So every single, I'm talking these pictures were like huge. Mm -hmm. And it was literally right when you walked into the front door. Knowing that Ken Mock knows exactly what that fucking photo shoot was. In case nobody knows, um, the all-star um, on cycle five, the jackass photo shoot did I say this on your last one? Yes, and I, and I, to, to save for time, because I do have to get off at 4.30, because I promised a client I would give oh, them a video. Shit. So Lisa, no, Lisa, we may have to, um, we may have to do a part two of this. Um, oh, but shit. what I'm going to say is the story that Lisa is mentioning about the jackass photo shoot, you can go check out our live that we did about Cycle 5 on my YouTube <clears> channel, and she goes into great detail about the jackass photo shoot and the significance of what happened behind the scenes with of, Ken that, shoot. of that shoot and what, I'll what that really, significance I'll say it is. so quick. If they want the details, then they can go back. But ultimately, mm -hmm. that was the photo shoot without mics on where Ken Mock uh, confronted me and said to just chill the fuck out. I'll do really great in the competition with like all these men suitors in the back. And um, I had no clue who they were, but they're all wearing like suits. And I begged him to not use my childhood trauma against me in interviews. Mm -hmm. I was, and by that time, I wasn't sleeping because I wasn't even having a glass of wine at night because I knew that they were going to use that. So now I'm back to square one and not sleeping. Um, so I begged him to please stop. And he refused. And he told me just to calm down and coast and you're doing great, you know? So when I walked into All Stars and the head producer, Ken Mock, knows fucking exactly what that picture is mm -hmm. and that's why tyra picked that picture because i stuck up for myself you know mm -hmm. like there's no other reason why to pick that that shot <clears throat> mm -hmm. um 
to see that blown up when every other girl had a super beautiful picture on the wall. It was like they picked the most beautiful picture of every other girl and blew it up like a beauty face picture. Um, you know, Laura's was her on the horse, which was a beautiful picture. Right, right, right. And then right. mine, they picked that. So mm -hmm. as soon as I walked into the door, my heart was like, oh, my God, this is all over again. Like, like triggered beyond belief. But I was like, I got this. Like, I'm happy. You know, like, I have a beautiful life. You know, I have love in my life. Um, so just know that that's that. And then from there, I was just like super scared of when they were going to start doing the psychological shit in interviews, because at this point I was like, oh, and I wasn't going to give up either, because then I knew that that would hurt my, like, if I walked off, then that, it'd be pointless. Like, I, if anybody can achieve this at this point, I can do this. I can do this. This isn't my first rodeo. Um, and so when they started to try to do like psychological shit, um, I remember looking straight into the, like, you're supposed to look straight at the interviewer when, when, mm -hmm. when you're, when you're doing those. And whenever they, they sidetracked, I would look straight in the camera and be like, Ken Moth, we aren't fucking doing this today. Okay. You know, like I did not fuck around cause I know he's on the other side looking at it somewhere in some fucking right. pipe or something. Um, so that's why I went back on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lisa, I love you. I'm just okay, being so honest, you know, it's, you know what? I know you're being honest, and that's why I am. I choose to be patient because I understand me being, um, of you know, being victim of things in my own life. It's important yeah. when given the opportunity that people give you a listening ear and they allow you to vocalize. However, you're able to vocalize it and verbalize it. So you're not bothering me. I just, I just. I just lovely. At least I love you. I enjoy you a whole lot. You, I'm so just, yeah, that's that's why I went on. Now okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's do this. Let's pivot a little going. bit because we because we only have about thirty minutes left, and I want to get through oh, at shit. least a and TM roll call. It's okay. I at least want to get it. If, if you're not doing nothing tomorrow, we can jump on tomorrow too. I originally had something to do, but I canceled it. Um, oh, okay. A and TM roll go. call. Life's better. So let's spend okay. the last 30 minutes of this doing a and &M roll call where I'm going to name every girl who was casted on your cycle. And you're going to okay. tell me the first thing that comes to your brain, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Try to truncate it just okay. a little bit for me, Lisa, so we can get through it, okay? There we go. Natural light is better. Here we go. Well, natural light okay. is the best. Okay, hold on. Dang it. I had it pulled up. Okay, here we go. The first person is Brittany Bauer. Uh, Brower, Brittany sorry. Brower, she was like, you know, uh, we were, we were made from the same cloth in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Super outgoing, so fun. She is hilarious. Um, yeah, I love, I, I love Brit Brittany. Just recently over this course of this last year, I was just really disappointed. And I think I unfollowed her because she thinks blue lives matter. And so that really pissed me off. You know that I'm super political. So I was just so offended that she was sticking no, up for no, blue lives. Did, did, she, did she explicitly say, Lisa, blue lives matter? She posts things on her social media about blue lives. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well. Hey, man, I'm just telling you the truth. I, Lisa, listen, I'm taking it. I just want to ask the but question. I do love That's her. all, Lisa. I, do, I mean, you know, I never met her. I enjoyed her when I spoke to her. At least I'm just asking questions so I make sure I'm doing my job. Don't spank me. No, and also, you know, I don't, I think that she educated herself more than obviously she would change her views, but I can't be following people with that shit on my timeline. Okay. What about Sheena? Uh, who? Sheena? Mm-hmm. Sheena, I loved Sheena so much. She was such a firecracker and her body was banging and like, um, she was an amazing singer. She had me listen to her iPad when we were in the car once and she had like a whole album and I was like, oh my God, your voice is beautiful. And she mm -hmm. also has your dimples in one of them, mm -hmm. in one side. I love, okay. I love Sheena. I went to her page a while ago and listened to her sing, and she sounded really good. Yeah. Her voice is really pretty. Beautiful voice. I, I thought she was... Ah! I thought she was done wrong. <laughs> no. Yeah, so... Okay. The next person on our list is Isis King. 
Um, ISIS has been one of my best friends for uh, since then, like completely, we could not ever separate ourselves. In fact, like, when she came to LA um, prior to, because obviously I want to protect her as a, as a trans woman, um, like nine months, eight, nine months pregnant, I went to go look for her apartments to make sure that it was really close to me and that it was gated. And I just really wanted to make sure that she was super safe and didn't just trust herself with finding an apartment since I know LA so well. So, um, you know, even took Adam with me, we'd go, I went apartment hunting for, for her and she was there the whole time yeah. when I had my kids, you know, she'd go on my like exercise walks. Um, I just, this just came, I just saw this when I was setting up. It's a, it's like a card for Venice when he was born or birthday, something from ISIS. Um, we were inseparable. We're not that anymore. She's best friends with Alice in Harvard now. And <sighs> even when Black Lives Matter like just happened, um, we had already had a falling out like a year prior um, over a, a racial, from what I understand, it was a, it was um, a, a racial, a racist comment for me. And from there, things have never been the same. Even though I apologized a million times, I, this is gonna, this is gonna, it's a long story and you don't have much time, but I mean, we could do this again tomorrow. You want to, and I can explain yeah. this story. Um, yeah. Do you know Corey? Corey is like her best friend in New York who she lived with. He's like a very flamboyant, um, young, black, gay male, right? Okay. Very slender. Um, always smiling, giddy, like so much fun. Um, on Instagram, he posts one morning, it was like a Tuesday, one morning he posted like his niece in like um, her new school, like private school outfit. And he said something that like she had all A's in her report card or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. Congratulations. Like keep pushing her with that, those brains, you know. And then I encouraged that photo. And then right after that, he posted a picture of himself, which I hadn't seen a picture of him in like six months. Like he just like all of a sudden showed up on Instagram again after all these years of us going back and forth. And he posted a picture of himself where he was now super buff. And it, he had a very serious face, which I had never seen before. His chin up a little bit with like, kind of looked like, um, like a mugshot type of pose, you know, like hardcore, tough and um super super buff and i wrote to corey i said oh my god i'm scared now um i was like now he's gonna be walking around like the rock and the reason i said that is because he's so funny and giddy and always smiling and now that he's so buff the only person i thought of that was that buff that smiled all the time is the rock um, so according to them, I remember I was in the kitchen and my phone was still on the charger and my partner called me, who's also really close to ISIS. And they called my husband and was like, tell Lisa to erase that comment right now. And I was, Adam's like, what did you, what'd you say? And I was like, I don't remember saying anything that was bad. And it turns out that because I said, I'm scared now, which was a joke because I'm friends with Corey and he's now super buff. The that was racist and also um, comparing him to The Rock was also racist, which, you know, I apologized profusely because I was like, I would, that was never my intention. I was just um, commenting on the different appearance and how he wasn't actually smiling, but in his personality his. And so I guess they took, um, they took major offense to it. And uh, I just got really hurt because even though I apologized a million times, um, ISIS never contacted me again, even though we hung out like every day. I mean, she came to my house constantly and I would just, you know, we'd just hang out. She'd stay here. She was always with my kids. And then when Black Lives Matter happened, like a year later after that instance, um, I told her again that like, I'm just gonna continue to learn. Once again, I'm gonna apologize again um, for that comment. That being said, like, you know, our friendship is more important. And then she she came back to me. Oh, and I offered, I was like, in the trans 
world. And I know that like nobody's working in LA because of quarantine. I was like, I, if you need anything, I'll drop it off. Like if you need food, if anybody you know needs anything, let me know and I'll drop it off at their house because I know that it's a really hard time. And she mm -hmm. thanked me. And then um, I even made like signs for, uh, for pride and everything. I put one of ISIS's pictures on there. I sent it to her like, um, like a picket sign, right? For the, mm -hmm. for, um, the LGBTQ community, the whole gay parade in LA. Because mm -hmm. ISIS had just posted something like, one day I'll have the courage to, to walk in a gay pride, but I'll, I'm still not, I don't feel safe doing it. So I made her a, a poster that my friend was gonna actually walk with. Um, I couldn't do it myself because my husband has leukemia. So he was very high risk, so I couldn't go and, but I made a lot of signs for everybody. Anyway, I made this for her and I was like, now Isis King can walk in where she where she'd love to, you know? And I sent it to her, she did not like it. Um, Cause she didn't like it at all. Like, and she didn't respond back to me. Um, but at some point she, she did respond and she was like, thank you so much. Um, also when that, when what that made you initial, think, when what, that initial, on, sorry. What made, what made you think she didn't like it? She told you she didn't like it or? She just ignored it. She ignored it. So, so you interpreted her ignoring it as she didn't like it. Yes. Gotcha. So, um, she ended up responding <clears throat> back to me and saying, um, you know, I'm really sorry, uh, that that all went down anyways, because I had just finished filming this movie about racism. And so I think I was also, it was just like, a, like just walking off the set and then that happening, like getting home. I think I was just being more sensitive. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, I thought that everything was like fine. And then she did Jay's chat and then she wrote something like, if everybody knew what I know about Lisa, she'd be canceled. And I'm like, wait, what? I didn't understand that. So I guess I said, she said she, she blocked me. Um, so whatever, that's that. There's ISIS, moving on. Okay. Um, Camille McDonald. I was just talking to Camille actually a little bit on IG. Um, I think Camille is beautiful mm -hmm. so and I, I think she's gorgeous. hella smart. Um, that's really it. She, I, one thing that kind of, uh, just, you know, off the top of my head and this is what you like, right? Right off the top of my head. I did not, I did. I, I think it's just when people are so obsessed with like designer things. You know, like that just kind of bothers me because it's it's not what's more important in the world. Mm -hmm. um, she was very much into her designer things and talking about her designer things. That's just not my cup of tea, you know. Okay. That's all. What about Brittany Bree Skirlock from Cycle Five, your fellow Cycle Five I, sister? I love Bree so much. Bree is. I mean, look at what she did for me on Cycle 5. She was the only one to check and see if I was okay. She mm -hmm. was the one that tried to help me out when I was having, like, the nervous breakdown crying session on the phone, like, telling me to breathe. Like, everybody mm -hmm. else was just, like, calling me names and laughing at me, um, which was devastating to watch. Um, but, no, Brie is my whole heart. The thing that sucks, though, is that her best friend is the person that's, like, out to get me, like um, – Bianca. So that's, that's always sit a little weird with me. But besides that, I love Brie. And I love Knight too. He's so cute. Um, next on the list is Kayla. I thought Kayla was so cute and fun. Um, she's a little ditzy, but it's like adds to her character. She was like, she's, mm -hmm. she's super cute. I, I loved Kayla. Um, next on the list is Bianca. <laughs> you know what? I Like I told you before, I think when I first met Bianca, I had never seen her previous cycles. I know that she was portrayed as the bitch. That didn't hinder my opinion of her at all because mm -hmm. guess what? I knew what that feels like. Um, I actually, the, my first uh, impression of her was, holy shit, she's fucking tall. I think she's like 6'2". Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And also like just how quick-witted she was. Mm -hmm. And when somebody's so quick and witty, like, I just assume that they're really smart. Um, so I just thought that she was so, so funny. The only reason that we had problems is because I stick up for people and myself. 
Mm -hmm. She doesn't like that. You think that's what it is or that's what you know it is? I have no fucking clue. She can't even say anything. She, you, okay. asked, you asked her and she didn't. She's like, I just don't. I just don't like her. Well, well, no, she, she, that's not what she said. Oh, she, she said, said that you Black Lives Matter. She doesn't yeah. like me fighting for mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter. And well, I used that. No, I don't, I, I don't think it was that. I don't think it was that. Tell me. Hold on. Enlighten me. Hold on. Let me jump to this because a fan wrote it out. This is from Jacob Wright. And they says, I was going to ask you this later, but I'll jump to it now. It says, it seems like the problems with her and Bianca either started or, hold on. No, is this the one? No, this wasn't the one. Dang it. I saw it earlier. I saw it earlier and I thought I saved it and put it down for me to ask you about because they wrote it out so eloquently. Dang it. I'm Okay, here it is. Oh, this okay. is from Kay Alia. Here we go. Could you ask her about her Instagram post about Black Lives Matter where she implied that Bianca was upset about her supporting Black Lives Matter, but in reality, Bianca was annoyed that she tagged Black Lives Matter in a prior post about a and drama. Yeah, that's what I meant. So what I was doing in that post was basically trying to say that there's more things, the petty details details of mm -hmm. things that just didn't make sense and and like just in writing in that post I was like like it was in the middle of um you know just like a month or two after uh George Floyd got murdered and I was like there's more things important like and then hashtag BLM as soon as she wrote mm -hmm. that she doesn't fucking like that and, and she felt disrespected with that I erased it and I was like that was not the intention it lasted on there for like 10 minutes and it was gone. Mm -hmm. So if that's still mm -hmm. like, are we 10? Seriously? Like I erased it immediately and apologized if that was offensive to anybody. Not to mention gotcha. though, even if I did do, if, even if I left it there, the content on my page was so fucking informative that mm -hmm. I still don't think that it was a disservice. Just saying. Well, I mean, you know, I didn't see the post. I don't I, I don't know what 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 the post is. I can I can honestly, honestly, I can see where Bianca could have gotten aggravated if 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 we're saying it how it was. I can see I can understand where she got aggravated. I think it's just bulls shit. I don't know, Miss Lisa. It's Also, I, I apologized I, and also took it off and also, you know, that wasn't even the point. And that's fucking bullshit anyways. She hated me from day one. Oh, so she she fucking hated me and then started drama with me in the house um, 10 years ago because I hashtag BLM. Get the fuck out of here. I think I think it just comes to a place where I hope humanity can get there one day where people can okay. just talk, where people can just talk and they can voice their opinions and it doesn't have to she be had no like problem. she had no it problem hanging you know. out with me at a hotel and acting like we were bffs in chicago when i invited her to all the amazing great things that i got invited to as she was my date we were fucking hanging out everything was like this and then it's all of a sudden another thing too is like right right after george floyd got murdered too i dm'd her and i said um after watching some top model and we argued, it comes across as like, I might possibly, you know, like having such a strong um, standpoint. Like I was like, mm -hmm. I can see if you might've thought then that I was racist, you know, just because I was so, I was standing up to her. And I was like, if that was ever your, if that's why you ever hated me, then I just want you to know that that's not the case at all. In fact, she also liked a lot of my content where I was talking straight to camera to help, in, um, educate um some of my followers about black lives matter like i was she was like yes you know and she commented and everything so it's like it's it's what it, one day she likes me one day she doesn't you know so what i'm gonna say about that what what i think i was trying to verbalize is yeah 
I can I can see where Bianca got aggravated, right? And I see you people down there talking about Bianca is one of my favorite. Yes, she is one of my favorite, but Miss Oliver is definitely a right is right, wrong is wrong type of person. I'm mm -hmm. I'm on the side of truth and justice. I can give a fuck if you know who's who's standing on either side. But in me just being a person who's I feel like I'm humane and understanding and caring, I can I can understand why. I'm not saying I agree with why she got upset. I can understand why. The post and the tagging got got on got on um, her nerve. Now, what in an ideal world, and if Oliver could paint the world out, it would be, "Hey, Lisa." Either Bianca says, "Hey, Lisa," because up until that point, according to you, you guys were cool. So a conversation about it should have been easy, like an easy DM, like, "Hey, this is what I meant. I apologize. Can you educate me more? Can you explain why I, you know, why it was a trigger? Why it was something? It's just, it's, it's, it's just." It's a game of understanding intent and being compassionate and understanding of where the other person is coming from, like, but while still being respectful of their feelings and your feelings and, and, and all that other stuff. If that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I think she's fucking petty, and I think she's... ...proceeds for DairyGo.com, my product, to Black Lives Matter... Mm -hmm. um so all that's fucking horseshit i don't buy it i think it's bullshit i think she's a bully and um whatever moving on which if you're saying which i have no reason to call you a liar or say that you're not lying if you're saying that your intent was this i do believe that your what you're saying your intentions are should be respected and should be accepted as the truth now if someone is viewing you through a lens of bias or whatever or whatever whatever then that's on them if you're saying that when I did this, it meant it was meant, you know, yeah. for this reason. I explained that should it be, to her. That should, so that she's going to be upset about that 10 years later. I wouldn't be surprised. I literally, as soon as she said, I don't like that, I was like, oh my God, if that offends you, I'll take it off. Like, that was not mm -hmm. my intention at all. But, you know, mm -hmm. she likes to believe whatever she wants because she needs to follow the narrative that she wants in her head. Um, that has nothing to fucking do with me. I so. want you and Bianca to figure it out one day. I don't fucking Hopefully. care about her. Oh my goodness. Okay. I've been oh. so nice. Somebody who just full on calls you a fucking crack whore, like online, knowing that I was the complete opposite of that and didn't even touch a drink on All Stars. Like, she perpetuates mm -hmm. a really disgusting pattern of gaslighting and abuse online. And, you know, I'm only cool with that if they're Trump supporters. Everything else, like, does not make sense. Like, nothing lines up and it's not fair and it's hurtful. Also, like, I'm, uh, me and Brie have a great relationship. So what the fuck is your problem? That has nothing to do with me. Let's move on. Okay. The next <laughs> person is Alexandria Everett. Uh, Alexandria. Okay. I want to start with Alexandria is also someone that is going to be part of me fighting um, on the front lines with, with, her, with her abuse being used against her and it being weaponized against her on Top Model. Mm -hmm. Her story is fucking crazy. So when she's able to talk about it herself, um, she will. But I'm just letting you know that they messed with her editing big time. Alexandria is so incredibly funny and talented as far as like acting and modeling. Like she's so amazing. Mm -hmm. She comes from a very traumatic background as well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I love Lex. I love Lex. Okay, Shannon. Uh, Shannon, I also think is such a sweet soul. Um, you know, I really tried to cater to her super belief of God. You know, mm -hmm. personally, I'm a I believe in karma. I'm I don't believe in organized religion at all. Um, mm -hmm. I accepted it. I think she's. It's just like a just an obsession at this point, and like. You know, her page was also something that offended me through the course of this last year. So I unfollowed her because she's just been so incredibly silent. I just think if you have a platform, you should use it. Now, Lisa, we mm -hmm. I just do. I just, I think that- Lisa, you know I love you. But you you just said you saw something on somebody else's page and unfollowed them because it, 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 it provoked an emotion on the inside of you, right? No, but listen, I Lisa, I love her. you. Uh-huh. I'm not no, I'm listening. I got her. you. Did I go? Did I go after her? 
Did I? I just said I just. No, don't... I don't think you did. No, exactly. Man, I, did. I just unfollowed mm -hmm. her because every time she posts and it's about God and love, mm -hmm. and then it's just completely silent over everything that's happening, like white supremacy, Black Lives Matter. Like I, I personally believe that if you were given a platform, it is your personal responsibility to use it and use your voice and be vocal and fight for what is right. Um, and yeah, it's not, it's not, not all the time, Lisa. I have to disagree with you on that. I, okay, I got. To, I, I have to disagree with you on that because, and I wasn't gonna bring Go this up, but but since but since but since you said that, I gotta bring it up. I don't think that the because. The, because you said the same thing about Laura when I posted my, my flyer that I was going to interview Laura. And you said you said that same exact verb. White, white people should, especially. Not... And, it's and, not and Laura came back... The BIPOC community. Laura came back and said, well, these are the things that I've been doing in my... In my... In um, in my community and she listed out you know she's 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 donated this for uh, marketing she's she she has a fund for this she has a whatever whatever for this i am of the firm belief that someone's social media platform whatever the intent is is up to them and me personally being someone who is a member of the black community of the gay community i can give two goddamn shit and I'm going to be very raw when I say this. I can give two shits about what a white person posts in regards to Black Lives Matter, in regards to trans lives, in regards to gay life. If in your, if in your secret life or in your day-to-day -day dealings, your feelings, do, your feelings and actions do not reflect that, I can give a fuck about a like, click, or comment. What work are you doing? And I know for me, I'm involved in a lot of things outside of social media, but I choose not to share it. One, considering considering what the topic is, social or political is very controversial. It's very controversial and, and, and uncomfortable. And it's sometimes uncomfortable. And not everyone wants to have that type of environment on their social media. Two, I'm of the firm belief that if you're truly doing something from your heart people are going to know and the people who need to know will know i don't need i don't need people to clap and be like oh yay yay no that's that's not what i want i don't want you saying that you support black lives matter and trans lives matter but as soon as you get off social media you calling me a nigga cracker tranny faggot all that other stuff and you're not doing nothing you're not you're not you're not donating. You're not taking anything out of your time. You're not giving back. You're not standing up for, for what's right. You're not calling to the. You're not calling the Congress. You're not doing all that. I can give a fuck about a comment like a post. So while I do agree that my white sisters and brothers who stand with us, yes, it should be vocal. On the other hand, I do think that respect should be given to those who don't who 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 don't um publicize it on social media and we have to be careful that just because someone doesn't say this is what i'm doing i'm going to the pta's the um the the the, the P listen i mm -hmm. ride around just, all, just to give, and also just to give you a little yeah. background to to, to 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 oliver i ride around atlanta all day in a black car doing my errands no one knows this i don't need to, i don't need to flash that and and anytime i see someone on the street or home they come into the car and be like hey i need something to eat i take money out of my pocket all of that now i could easily be on instagram and be like hey this is what i'm doing but that's not that's not something i choose to share because i want to keep it you know but i just think it should just Agreed. be respected and, also, and, and assumptions should be made who was disrespectful all i did was ask her why she didn't she could have been like because i do it in my real life easy answer done she didn't and then in fact what happened was that is the answer she could have said. Instead, <laughs> I thought everyone would be like, ooh, Lisa's coming for blood over... Well, Lisa, you, know, you did kind of like, come for her. Like, I was like, oh, God, I was God, honestly Lisa. wondering. Mm -hmm. I was honestly asking. Uh-huh. Which I believe Which I believe you were honestly asking, and I don't think there's nothing wrong with asking. Let me just be clear about that. I do believe you were honestly asking, and I do believe there's nothing wrong with asking. But Lisa, I did see your comment, and when I saw it, I said, oh, God, Lisa. The the question had a tinge of bias that the assumption was she hadn't done anything. From me, for me not knowing any for me not knowing you two never being in your space, only sharing spaces on Instagram. When I read the comment, it was like the oh, question the kind of assumed. That. I know why you thought that. You thought that because I put it publicly and if we were friends, then why didn't I DM it? I remember no, it was something like No, 
No, it and wasn't the whole thing that. is was... I tried to call her. She wasn't answering me in text message when it, when it had to do with that question. Listen, mm -hmm. I also agree that that I don't, I'm not asking anyone to just be like a performative activist. It's mm -hmm. more of like, this shit has lasted for 400 fucking years. We are now in the position to where we have social media. And mm -hmm. since white people created this, it's white people's mm -hmm. responsibility to stand up to this. And knowing that, that Laura comes from a place of like middle America, like super white farm girl, like the, her following, those are, that, that's the root of, of, you know, those red states. But so she's doing really what she feels from, comfortable. No, I get it. And I also mm -hmm. understand that not everybody has the strength and energy to fight this fight, even online. And also, I don't know what online, but she is fighting it though, Lisa. She is fighting it. And that's all I want to know. She is fighting it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. she is fighting it. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we are in the position. Of I love you, Lisa. Today. We are in the, I'm not kidding. We are in the position no, I know, of society today where we have social media. Mm -hmm. We have social media. That is mm -hmm. a tool. You know, and I'm, I can't even believe that some people are, you know, and let me tell you, Oliver, for the record. You, if you thought that was big, that's fucking nothing. In the mom community online, do you know that like half of them think I'm a fucking monster? Because I was like, I am so sick of seeing your white family like just mm -hmm. posting, you know, matching pajamas all day long when real shit is happening right now. And you have 180,000 followers as this mommy blogger and you can't fucking post shit. I, those are the things I've actually said on people's pages. Me asking on your page, you have such a beautiful platform. I, I'm just wondering why, like I did this in the DM right afterwards to her. I was like, I was just wondering why, because you have such a beautiful voice and because people trust you and you're such a kind soul, I don't know why you don't, you know? It would just be such a beautiful platform to add to, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's all I meant. And I know I come off, you know, like quick and it's just like, well, why don't you use your platform for Black Lives Matter, that's the way I'm saying it. You know how mm -hmm. Tom gets lost in text? Like it was just yeah. a question. Yeah. And that, yeah. that, that's also like, if I could just say it and it be like a message on your page, it would come across that way. Like you actually, like, why don't you use, um, why don't you put Black Lives Matter on your page? Like that's literally mm -hmm. how I, I wrote it in my brain. And then just seeing even like young, <laughs> just seeing like young it. black men mm -hmm. being like, oh, Lisa's coming for you. Like, don't worry. Like, don't worry. Don't worry, Laura. We got you. Even though she hadn't responded. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're mad at me and I'm fighting for you. That's just well, crazy to me. Well, but no, Lisa. Well, well, and this, 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 this may be a good point to put it because it's 431 and I got to get off. I don't, I don't want to get in trouble with my own self. But I think it's not so much because I, I remember, I remember in real time. And yeah. again, I've only met you virtually. I've only met her virtually. So I don't have too much to go off of, you know. Mm -hmm. When I read the comment, I, I, I said, oh, my God, Lisa. So speaking to the gay black men who were saying, who were saying, you know, you know, Lisa's coming for you, Laura, and all the other stuff. It wasn't that they were upset about you sticking up for Black Lives Matter, it was just, it, the the question posed to Laura, what, at least for me, from my perspective, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a dog in the fight, it did come off slightly antagonistic. It did, just a little bit. It did come and off I antagonistic. And I that afterwards, too. Like, that and wasn't... so, and so, and, and all of, which, yes, and, and all of these things, I think it just comes, you know, I'm blind. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm learning this too as as I'm getting older. Like, cause people get on me all the time. You know, Oliver is is how you said or whatever, whatever I said make you feel that way. And in my brain, I'm like, I didn't say anything. I just whatever, whatever. I just think we just have to. I don't know. It's so weird. We just, it, it's a combination of 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 being sensitive to certain situations and and trying our very best, however we can, to make sure that our intent is getting through. You know what I'm saying? That yeah, no, because. I hate you. There's 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 a lot of ways I wish I could just flat out say things even on these ANTM lives, but I know if I say it like this or or if I do it like that, people may get lost in my intention and what it is that I'm actually acting. So I try to police my verbiage, my mood, the way I'm looking, the way I'm sitting, so that people understand my intent. Yeah, um, I really just asked the question, and 
I'm not. I, I apologize if the tone is off. You know, um, that being said, like, I think ultimately that there is uh, an idea of a personality and just assuming a, a certain characteristic about that person as well. Um, honestly, I didn't think it was an offensive question. I think it was an honest question. And she could have answered it a million ways and been like, I do like and, and in my, and, you know, with my community. And then it would be like, oh, my, my answer would have been like, oh, my God, amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it is what it is. And also at that time, that was still like very fresh. Like I was doing mm -hmm. so much research it on it. And so mm -hmm. I was so invested in change. Um, and just seeing that people were just dropping dead constantly and getting murdered. It was just breaking my heart. Like I'm just really mm -hmm. empathetic in general. You know, I'm an empath. Mm -hmm. So it was just breaking my heart to see so much silence online and knowing that Laura is such a lover. Um, I just didn't understand it. And so it, to me, it was just an honest question. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need more time. I think that, you know, being uncomfortable is what helps you grow. So uh -huh. if it made, if it made people uncomfortable, I still don't really care. I apologize if the, if it made them, I guess, uncomfortable, but like at the mm -hmm. same time, I'm like, you know, like this, we don't have any more fucking time. How many people need to lose their dad? How many strong black men and women do we need to lose? Because you don't have the courage to even post anything online. We have this amazing tool that reaches people from all over the world over this. Mm -hmm. And if you can't even post one thing because it hurts I the get it. artistic aesthetic of your page, I'm sorry. I frown upon that. You can, I, I think, and remember we had this talk. You were like, um, you know, in my eyes, like I'm living my life and blah, 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 whatever you said. And I was like, totally, like, there's no reason why you should have to. It's almost like, I also don't think that, that um, the BIPOC community should even um, be protesting. Like, I think you guys should be sitting up with your feet up. I think that we all should be doing the work now. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I'm, I'm offended that more white people aren't standing up. And I also think that a lot of them just say that they're doing things in their community. I'm not gonna like to go prove it to me, but like, you know, I just think that there could be more done. And I think that, that white people are, are comfortable and at the end of the day, like they know they don't have to and they can be lazy and it can be performative, whatever. And so that just annoys me. I'm sorry, I'm a fighter. I'm a lover and a fighter. It weighs mm -hmm. me down on both ends. I get in trouble for it. But guess what? I'm going to mm -hmm. fucking make a difference. And that's just it. And if people get rubbed the wrong way, I don't fucking care. I apologize that it offended you. But get and the see, fuck Lisa, out of my way. Like, this this is, is why I enjoy Lisa Diamato. Everyone <laughs> asks me, why do you like talking to Lisa Diamato? Because I enjoy talking to people no matter what they believe, no matter what my opinions are on what they believe, no matter whatever, whatever, I enjoy someone who believes what they believe, they can stand firm in it, come what may. Mm -hmm. And for that, I will always respect and honor and enjoy Lisa because I, me personally, I enjoy these types of talks, especially when people can stand firm in what they have to say and they believe what they have to say. Whether, mm -hmm. whether I believe it's true or not, or whatever my opinion anybody else is thinking is, they believe it, these are their reasons, and Lisa, that is you all mm -hmm. freaking day and i must say considering what you have told us about your past and the things that you have gone through for you to have that amount of what's what's the vocabulary word i can steadfastness um, said i'm, I'm going to say steadfastness in 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 seeking for justice and wanting to um wanting to advocate for other people who may be going through the same things as you that should be commended because that does take a strong, 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 strong person. Now, whether people out there believe that she's doing it the right way, she's not doing it the right way, whatever, whatever, that's left up to whoever. But I'm going to commend you for taking your pain and finding a, 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 um, a purpose and wanting to do it for other people, not only yourself. You know, they have this whole, it's a whole study that the people that have, uh, lived through the most pain um they end up being like the most empathetic people because they have 
they've endured so, so much pain, so, so deep. And if they're at the place to where they were actually to climb themselves out of that, they mm -hmm. then fill that void with things that are on the mission to, you know, like, I don't care about fucking money. I know that comes with success or whatever, but like, I care about making a difference and being passionate about what I love. I don't want to do mm -hmm. anything. If it's just the money, I don't fucking care. Like everything needs to stand for something because there's no time in this world anymore. Like even just with climate change, I mean, I could go on forever about this, but like, I'm not, you know, I'm on this earth. I survived what all, everything that I survived. And now I have two kids <laughs> and like, there's no point for me to live unless uh -huh. I'm making it a better place for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's just where my heart is. Okay, should we do, go back to top model? <laughs> no, I, I, and, and I was gonna say with that, Lisa, I'm gonna have a skedaddle because I, I don't want my client getting yelling at me. They need a scissor roll. I need to make sure they get it today. Okay, but so I'm gonna we'll text you, tomorrow. text me. Yeah, text me or DM me, however you want to contact me. And we can set up a time tomorrow because we want to. We have to finish the things of the things of the things. Lisa, I, can, I enjoy talking to you. I really do enjoy talking to you. As crazy as I think you are sometimes, I enjoy just listening and listening i i enjoy it i enjoy it thank you i appreciate that i enjoy talking to you and um i hope you have a wonderful like meeting and also don't be scared to open up my dms trust me they don't bite i know people are scared of me because i don't give a fuck and i'll say what's on my mind but ultimately like i'm a really good person like i don't oh you know i'm i'm a really deal. loving oh, person but like i'll blaze i'll blaze through some shit like pow pow like get out of my way but it's always for a like, good Whoa. purpose. She it's for a like, good Whoa. purpose. Oh, somebody wanted this, right? So, um, Whoa. back for a vengeance, just as intended. Fully loaded out of detention. Better than ever, won't forget to mention. Clear heading in the right direction. Eye on the prize. Stay out of weight or just might. Might skip class, but I laugh last. Suicide doors, of course, with a twist. Top bitch, never sad. I be like, Whoa! Whoa. La oh. There you go. <laughs> Lisa love you Oliver have a wonderful Lisa, meeting thank you guys girl, we we'll are, do this again we are back at it again Lisa <laughs> are you gonna put this together as one no oh no Lisa it has it to too? be separate yeah it's gonna be separate it's gonna be separate okay um I'll wear a different outfit for you yay I'll put on a different robe for you <laughs> you know what I'll do too tomorrow I'll do it on my balcony so you see the whole castle behind me Oh, Let's do nice. that. You guys want to see nice. the house? I'll show you guys my house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I want to see the castle. <laughs> Bye, Lisa. I mean, here's my jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah. Go jump in. Oh, you should have PTSD every time you see a jacuzzi. I would. I would never want to get in jacuzzi after. Lisa, we're gonna keep talking. I gotta go. I okay. Okay. Bye. One. 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 Bye. Bye, everybody. We'll see you again. <laughs> I love Lisa Diamond. <laughs> Cause I knew, I knew that mother comes with the thing of the thing of the thing. <laughs> I would like a special ticket to sit in Lisa's brain. I just want to sit there and just see and just watch and just see and watch. Lisa, I love you, girl. Listen, y'all. This is Oliver Twix. <laughs> we haven't we haven't quite finished doing the Lord's work, but we're going to resume tomorrow. So that is y'all homework. Make sure y'all come back tomorrow, whatever time we do. It'll probably be the same time. Wait. Yeah, I got to look at my schedule. I don't know. We'll see. But I'll see after I get off this. I love you guys. Your homework is to make sure you come back for part two of Oliver and um, Lisa D. Models chat about Cycle 17, All Stars of America's Next Top Model. I have all your questions here. We got so many more questions to get through, so much more things to unravel to make sure we talk about. But um, today was a good chat. I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed it, at least. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, too. And take t take something out of it. Take something out of it. Um, and with that, guys, be sure to pray and kegel. Be safe, guys. Love you. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, telling you to make sure you tune in every Thursday, of course, to see me. <laughs> and you can see my other friends and family 
doing the thing of the things of the things listed. You do not want to miss it. It is family fun and crazy chaos. It's always some shit going on from every, it's so many twists and turns. You do not want to miss this. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. Get back, get back. Get back, get back, get back, get back. Get back, get back. Get back, get back. CAP, zapping all you hoes away like get back, get back. CAP, 